welcome to this tutorial video. In this video we'll be looking at networks in terms of minimum cuts and maximum flow. So let's have a look at what a minimum cut and maximum flow actually represents. So we have a system here of waterway pipes. Water comes in from a source side, goes all the way through all the pipes and comes out at a sink side. Much like a tap to sink, okay, runs from a source to a sink. Here's another representation of the above waterway where we start at point A, the source, and it shows direction of arrows to point A, the sink. And you can see there's different ways in which you can get from the source to the sink, A to D to E, etc. Now, a graph that has two points and an arrow in between is called a directed graph. So this is no longer just a standard network, this is a directed graph or a directed network, meaning that flow can only go from A to B. It can't go in reverse from B to A because that's against the arrow. In addition to being a directed graph, we have numbers on them. So these could represent, for example, 5 litres per second, a rate at which water flows in these tubes. In other uh, weighted and directed graphs, the numbers of the weighting, as we call it, for example, this example here has a weight of 15, it might represent the number of people per hour that work, walk on a footpath, the number of uh, passengers on a train, um, the amount of gigabytes per second that flow through an MBN connection. It's weighted, so it has a value as well. So let's look at this particular system and investigate the minimum cuts and the maximum flow. So first of all, a cut is, if you like, if we were to cut through the pipes, as I've done here, slice through, and completely separate the source from the sink so that none of the water from the source can make it across to the sink. If we cut this tube here, top left, the middle, and the bottom left, then none of the source, water from the source, will make it to the sink. So that represents a cut along this particular directed graph. Now we can calculate a capacity or a value for that cut. So, cut number one, from the bottom, it cuts through the value of 10 from A to D, so 10 is included. Then we go up and it cuts across the line with a weighting of 5. 10 plus 5, so cut one has a capacity of 15. Let's look at cut two. This is another way in which we completely cut off water flowing from the source to the sink. If we were to slice right through the top here, Effectively, none of this water coming through from the source will reach the sink. So here's cut to on our directed and weighted graph. So it's cut through from D to E, a value of 1, from C to E, a value of 5, and B to E, a value of 3. So 1, 5, and 3 gives us a capacity for cut 2 of 9. And that will completely cut off any flow from the source to the sink. Here's a third cut to consider. If we were to slice off the bottom here, cut through this upright, around through another upright, and cut this angle one at the top, we're cutting through one, two, three, four pipes, that would also completely cut off any water flowing from the source to the sink. A cut that completely cuts off the water flow is called a valid cut. Okay, so, so far we've looked at cut one, cut two, and cut three, all of which are a valid cut. If I were, for example, just to cut here, this particular, across the 10, the 3, and the 1, that would be an invalid cut because water can still flow from A to B to E. A valid cut completely cuts off the source of the sink. Let's look at the capacity of this cut 3. At first inspection, it looks like it just cuts off here through 1, then through 3, then through 6, then through 3. So 1, 3, 6, and a 3 would give me cut 3 with a capacity of 13. Have you seen the problem with this particular cut though? This is an exception to the rule. Let's look at this more carefully. As we slice through D to E of capacity 1 and then D to C of capacity 3, that's all valid. When I get to this point and I cut across the point from C to B with a capacity of 6, you'll notice that all the directed flow from C to B has come from D to C. Or in the diagram, when we cut off this bottom one here, there's no water that actually reaches this. So, so this cut has no effect. It doesn't need to be considered. Because 
in slicing the bottom one here with a capacity of 3, no water actually reaches this capacity of 6. So the true cut capacity here is a 1 and a 3, not including the 6, so the 6 is removed, and a further 3. 1, 3 and 3 gives me a capacity of 7. Again, cut 6 isn't included in our capacity because when we slice off our capacity here between D and C of 3, we remove any flow going through C to B. 6, that capacity, has no validity in our cut. Again, we've cut it at the bottom. No water can reach this point because all that flow comes from the below pipe here. Now, the way which I like to try and examine whether a cut contributes or doesn't contribute to the flow capacity is considering running along the dotted path from the bottom of the network to the top as though you're in a car. Now if you drive over the side of a, a line, an edge, and that line goes from your passenger side through to your driver's side or left to right, then you count that capacity. However, if your line travels from the driver's side through to the passenger side from right to left, you don't count capacity. Let's have a look at this example and see how it goes. Okay, so first of all, on cut one, starting at the bottom, we're driving along. This line goes through the passenger through to the driver, left to right, so that cut counts. Up the top here, that line goes through the passenger across the driver, so it counts as well. So the 10 and the 5 both count and cut one has a capacity of 15. Cut two, this line, edge goes through the passenger and out the driver left to right, so it counts the 1. Um, this link here from C to E, this edge goes through the passenger and out the driver left to right, so it counts. And finally this capacity of 3 goes through the passenger out the driver left to right. It also counts, so cut 2 has a capacity of 9. But finally cut 3, this little edge from D to E goes through the passenger from left through the driver to right. So it goes from passenger to driver left to right. So the one is counted. This one also comes, this line goes through the passenger, out the driver, left to right. It counts with three. This one here, however, the arrow goes from C to B through the driver and out the passenger. This doesn't contribute. So that six contributes nothing to the overall capacity of this cut. And finally, from B to E, goes through from the passenger side, out through the driver side, left to right, so that does add and contribute to the overall capacity. Now quickly, let's have a look at this little system. I've got here one, two, three sections of tubing. And imagine we've got water flowing through. You get five litres per second through the first section of the tube, a bigger diameter in the second section with 20 litres per second, and then finally a very small diameter um, section of tubing with only two litres per second. Okay, so section A has a flow rate of five litres per second, section B, 20 litres per second, and section C has a flow rate of 2 litres per second. Now that system, even though we can put 5 through this first section and 20 through this section, it's actually restricted by the lowest value. So we were again to like draw cuts, this would have a capacity of 5, cutting through here would have a capacity of 20, this cut would have a capacity of 2. So the maximum flow is actually restricted to the minimum cut. This whole system can only ever, from left to right, pass through two litres of water per second at a maximum capacity. So the maximum flow of our system is actually measured by the, um, the minimum um, cut. So this two litres per second is the minimum cut. It is actually stated as the maximum flow for this system. So going back to our previous example, cut one has a capacity of 15. Cut 2 has a capacity of 9. Cut 3 has a capacity of 7. So the minimum cut is 7. The ma maximum flow of this network is equal to the minimum cut capacity. So the minimum cut of 7 tells us this network, this weighted directed network, has a maximum flow of 7. I hope that's made some sense. And the concept of driving a car along your cut lines with lines going from left to right counting and right to left not counting is a bit of a foolproof way of trying to examine a network and finding out whether or not the capacity of a particular edge contributes to that cut. Anyway, keep practicing. I hope this has been a useful video. Keep studying your maths.
Thanks for watching.